he would pass me the gravy for the turkey at mm. like holidays. And I was like, no, Papa, the red one. He goes, the sauce? Yeah. yeah I was yeah. like, can I have the sauce, please? <laughs> 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 What's up, everybody? Woo! here. Fucking podcast. Garrett Smith and John Chesbro. We got Michelle. Episode Fosi. three. Episode three with Michelle Fozzi. Addy. Yeah. Oh, talking about music. Talking about talking about stuff about music. I already said that. I'm repeating myself. We're just gonna. It's talk early. About- it's early for us. Yeah. You know. It's, it's we it's do these later. It's early in the day. We're we're we don't know what's yeah. going on. I don't even know where I am right now. I think I got kidnapped and I'm in someone's attic. But um, luckily, the kidnappers are allowing me to do this podcast. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> nice guys, nice guys. Yeah, like, hey, John, do you, want some, do you want some pizza as well? I'm like, wow, they're really uh, <laughs> God, why are you feeding you? me earlier? <laughs> really like, you know what? I think, I think you and I are onto something. I think kidnapping is a good way to like not have to work, number one, not have to deal with bills. They're taking care of you. Yeah, yeah, you're in a hole, but like they're feeding you and you're still alive, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Steve, edit that out. <laughs> no, please keep that in there. That's gold. Yeah, um, you look so cute when the camera's close to you. Like, I just want to boop your snoot. Oh, my God. And I have a big nose. I just want to go boop. Snout. I have, I have I a fucking know. snout for a nose. It's like a shark. Yeah, but you, you're, you're very, it's geometric and fun. You have a fun face. I still have to shave a little. Look, look at I have like a fucking neck beard. Yeah, I'm getting my neck beard. Show your underbeard. Show everyone your underbeard. You see it? Ooh, baby. It's patchy and ugly. So at some yeah. point, I'm gonna shave my beard off and just keep a mustache and soul patch. Yeah. Go go full seventies with it. I honestly, wish I could grow more hair up here. Mm. Like you know, it's like if I could have Steve's beard, I could just take it off his face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, take parts of his beard. He yeah. wouldn't even miss it either. He wouldn't miss yeah, it. Just grow it back like he's fucking Wolverine. Exactly. Like his skin. <laughs> um, yeah, so coronavirus, COVID-19 stuff still obviously going on. Um, some updates that we found. Um, there's a lead scientist, uh, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, said that the vaccine for COVID-19 uh, could possibly be available um, soon. Oh wait a minute! It says next. It says it says next spring. Never mind. That's not soon. Never mind. Um, never mind. <laughs> so we're fucked. Um, but you know, Say his name uh, five times faster. Sanjay Gupta. Sanjay Gupta. Sanjay Gupta. Sanjay Gupta. Sanjay Gupta. Eat out of it. Sanjay Gupta. Sanjay Gupta. Sanjay Gupta. Um, <laughs> yep. Uh, America. Mer- America. You know, I heard they uh they pushed back like all the Marvel movies that are coming out. We push yeah. back Black Widow like a year, even though they've been hyping yeah. it up for like five months. So anyone Jeez, interested in uh, Marvel movies, you gotta wait, unfortunately, because it sucks. You can follow yeah. a lot of them on, like on Instagram. And like I follow Tom Holland, Spider-Man, and uh, he always posts he's, like funny stuff. And he's always he's a funny bastard, funny. yeah. Yeah, he's always doing funny like challenges and stuff. He's a cool guy. I like right. him a lot. I think he's the best Spider-Man. In my opinion, I like Tobey yeah, Maguire because I, I grew up with it. But like Tom right, Holland, right. just like fits the profile, you know. You know what's funny? I, I saw all the I saw all of his um, Tobey Maguire, but I didn't see the other two with uh, I forget his name. Oh, uh, Andrew Garfield. Yeah, I didn't see any of those. Were those any good? I didn't see him either, but I heard they were horrible, so they're probably not oh. horrible anyway. Sorry, I remember they good. they casted like Jamie Foxx as like Electro as the villain, and I was like, that's weird. Yeah, <laughs> well, like I I read a lot of reviews, and it was like. It, it wasn't really like Spider-Man because like he was a cool kid and he was an asshole. And Spider-Man, mm. like the comics, is like a, a young kid who's a dork. Everyone hates him, and then he's Spider-Man. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's kind of like what Stan Lee's interpretation was of like some underdog rising up and being right. really cool. So. Yeah, I, Tom I, Holland's uh, definitely my favorite Spider-Man too. For sure. Should yeah. We, should we be calling Michelle? 
Yeah, we can uh, we can give her a call. Before, right before we do, we're just going to plug a few things. Uh, check out thecosmicvultures.com. Uh, check out um, our albums on there, um, some future dates that we still might be playing and performing at. Um, check out our YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, our YouTube channel. This, this podcast will be posted on YouTube as well. Uh, please uh, like it. Please comment. You check us out on Facebook. Check us out on Instagram. Um, uh, and check us out on Spotify and any streaming services. Check out our albums, EPs. Yep. Message us. Talk to us. Uh, follow the Cosmic Vultures podcast Facebook page. And, uh, and, and be a friend. Be, yeah. be a friend. What's up, everybody? We got Michelle Forziati here talking to Hello. music, talking about life, how things are going on in today's crazy world. So yep. what's going on, Michelle? How you doing? Um, I mean, I have my moments, right? Um, I yeah. feel like it's a roller coaster ride. Some days I'm so determined and I have all this motivation. I'm like, this is great. And I have other days where I'm just like, the world is coming to an end and I don't yeah. know about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I feel the same way. Yeah. So are you, are you work, are you working right now? I am not, I'm a ballroom dance instructor. So that is very, very high contact. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, so yep. no, I am not. What about you guys? Are, are you working now? John's um, John's working right. I'm I'm working right now. I work at Lakey in Burlington. I do transport there, so um, they're they're having us, you know, just a normal day for us, you know. Just right. Don't ever stop. Yeah, oh, healthcare, nice. healthcare will keep you going. I'm actually yeah. I'm furloughed until June 26th for my job, so I'll be sitting here collecting dust for two months. <laughs> nice, nice. I like yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So that's why we that's why we actually started the podcast because we were like. We're big into music. We know people who are big into music or just the arts in general and just want to talk about it. And if anyone's creating anything, you know, we want to just discuss it so people can have something to watch um, and listen to. Um, Awesome. So, yeah. So we're, um, we usually have our bass player Steve on here, but he couldn't make it today. So it's just John and I, but um, yeah. So I checked out some of your songs. I checked out the ones on Spotify and I want to talk about them. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So, did you write those songs? I did. Awesome. What? So, I listened to, it was No More from 2013, mm-hmm. and then Secrets I Keep from 2018. Yes. Um, let's start with No More. So, how did that one come about? Was that the first song you had written at the time? It was. Um, so, I, I've always loved music, and I was like, you know what? I, I, I want something that's mine. And I actually just, I wrote the lyrics down and then I went to a producer in Boston. Um, There was a studio named Sanctum Sound and um, I just kind of sang it for him and he created the beat right there, which is, which was really cool to actually watch happen. Um, So I, yeah, I was in a relationship where it was just like, I don't want to try. I don't want to do this anymore. Like I'm doing everything for you and you're just, you're not giving me the same and that's kind of the way mm. I guess I expressed it so mm-hmm. good good inspiration yeah. you know. Excellent. so so that that was 2013 and then so five years later you did another song was there anything in between or did you just decide at that point like hey I'm ready for another song you know there was such a, a big time in my life where I I didn't know who I was or I didn't even know I mean I don't know if you guys ever gone through this where I was just like Music has been such a huge part of my life where, you know, it was the one thing I could always depend on. No matter my feeling, it was always there for me. And I went through a period where I felt like maybe I, how could I be good enough for music? Like I went through this phase of not knowing myself and not knowing if I could be worthy enough to be within music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of, I kind of hit a spot where I was just like, you know what? I just want to do the things I want to do, like the things that I love. I want to create yeah. music. I want to listen to. And I just, I decided that I didn't want to be afraid anymore. No matter yeah, what the are. outcome was, I just didn't want to be afraid anymore. So I just started everything back up again. You make a good point because music makes you brave. Um, yeah. You can express yeah. yourself in so many ways. I feel the same way sometimes when I feel like I can't depend on anything. I could just pick up my guitar and just kind of float away into whatever I want, I guess. Um, yes. But yeah, that, that's actually pretty cool. Um, now, do you, do you have any plans on making any more music or an album or anything like that? 
Yes, I'm actually working on an album right now. Um, nice, there's going nice. to be 10 tracks. I've written five already and I've recorded uh, three of them. And so now I'm in the process of writing the other five. Nice. So, awesome. Yeah. So who, who are you collaborating with? Is there anybody in the Boston area you had mentioned? Um, yes. So the beats right now, the, the tracks that I get, I get them off of BeatStars. Mm -hmm. um, and I, record, I recorded a lot of them with uh, Greybeard Productions and Framingham. Cool. But I'm also um, the gentleman who produced No More. I actually was able to get in contact with him again, and there may be some future music being made, original kind of beats and tracks, so that they'd be right. original to me, like No More was. But um, yeah, that's kind of, I'm excited. That's kind of, I'm like lost in all of these papers because I, I'm so old school. I love like pen and paper, and I, I have in my yeah. purse with me, I always have pen and paper, and I have like these. I'll be sitting on my bed or I'm on the floor and there's just like papers everywhere. It's like confetti and I'm like piecing them together. And I'm like, this is great. That's no good. I'm like, <laughs> right, right. No, I get that. Yeah. I have a, like, I think I have like 45 notebooks in a <laughs> box somewhere and I'm like, what? Right. Um, <laughs> um, but um, yeah. So if, so did, how would you describe your music to people who, who haven't heard it before? Oh man. Okay. So if people ask me this question all the time and for some reason it's so difficult for me to kind of put myself within a, a specific category but if I have to it, it's it's more of like a pop with a little bit of an airiness to it now mm -hmm. um I kind of I guess I'm an actress too so I guess kind of what I'm, I'm looking for is to treat every song as an individual and however yeah. it yeah. wants to be born is kind of the sound I'm going with so mm -hmm. I have some that are very hard rock that are going to be coming out. And then I have some that are a little bit more of a ballad. So, I mean, it's a little bit of everything, but if, if I'm going to stick to one, I'm going to say it, it's a little bit more pop, um, yeah. with a little bit of an, an eerie kind of a feel to it. If, Excellent. Yeah. So you, you, you do act as well. Um, that's funny. I, my, one of my, background besides music is theater I, I did a lot of theater in my day and I'm a big theater guy um do you do like plays or do you, do you do short films movies um I do movies and tv shows my very very first ever anything um I I booked the audition I'm so grateful I played Jill Hurley in the movie Stronger mm -hmm. and um it was the first time I ever auditioned for anything and I had an audition I got the director's call back and I auditioned for Jake Gyllenhaal and David Gordon Green. And I love Pineapple Express. It's one of my nice. favorite movies in the world. And nice. he was the director. So um, that was the first thing I've, I've ever done. And, and oh my goodness, the, so beautiful. What a beautiful experience. Yeah, um, it was really cool getting that call back. Oh my God, it was. I, I, I didn't know what to, you never really expect anything, right? You just go yeah. in trying to. I look at auditions now. Yeah, you just kind of go for it. And I look at it like, you know what? This is what I have to offer. Either you like it or you don't, but this is all of me and you could take it or you could leave it. Yeah, And right. they were, they, they liked it. They, they liked me and, and I was able to go to a premiere and um, it was just, it was a beautiful experience. I'm so grateful. That's awesome. That's awesome. Cool That's that amazing. Yeah, yeah. They um, acting, like in the arts in general, I find are just can be very vulnerable. Right. You know? So it's right. like, that's really cool that like you get that reward of like getting a call back and like going to the premiere and stuff like that. So that's like, that's really cool. That's yeah. Good yeah I, I, I've i never yeah. gotten another, I mean, I get a high from playing live. We, every time our band plays and, and we, you know, we get a high during that, but I used to get a high just from getting off stage after, after a production, um, just everyone coming up to you and like, wow, you know, all this reaction. That was such a great, great feeling. Um, yeah. I was a character actor. I would just take on, give me the hardest part possible, and I would just go home and be that person for a long time. Oh my yeah. god! Uh, yeah, uh, that's a lot of fun for sure. Um, so your last name? Okay, John. I'm sorry. I was saying I played a sheep for like five years in my church play as a kid. I had like a good long running. It was like a sheep. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna be the best sheep ever. That's right. <laughs> I didn't have any lines. It was just a cute little sheep. That's it. My, yeah, I think um, the first the first show I was in, I was in Annie, and I was the dog catcher. I was in the sixth grade. 
Um, and I, I auditioned again a couple of years later for Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And um, I did a horrible audition. I was like in the eighth grade. I didn't, I wasn't into acting yet. I just wanted to do it for fun. And I got casted as a gumball machine. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, I was so upset about it that I quit. And the wow. director was like, well, because, he's like, because of you, there are no gumball machines. And I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It's all your uh, fault. There was no gumball machine. I, 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 I tainted. I tainted that that play because there's no gumball machine. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so your last name is Forziati, which is obviously Italian. Yes. We have some Forziatis in the family. Um, oh no way! Yeah, yeah. I have a distant, not a distant cousin, but a cousin. My mom's cousin, Bridget Forziati. Do you have a Bridget in your family? No. No, I'm sure there's a lot of Forziati. So I just, yeah. I just thought I'd ask. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't, I mean, maybe s somewhere, but not, right. yeah, not to. It's a popular name, so I, I figure yeah. there's a lot of Forziatis out there, but just thought I'd ask. <laughs> yeah. um, so have you, so you've been in Boston, uh, I'm sure, I'm, I'm guessing the town surrounding Boston your whole life, you've been in Massachusetts your whole life? Yes, I grew up in the North End, and um, mm. now I'm in Bedford, so. Nice. <laughs> yeah, go close to Boston. Yep. Yeah, yeah North End's, North, the North End's beautiful. I go there every chance I can get. It's like the little side streets, the little corners, the cobblestone. Like, yeah. it's so cozy. There's nothing like it in Boston. I look at the special corner, special section in Boston. Some people just need to experience. Right. Oh, my goodness. It's so true. No. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's... Some you haven't? Boston, I haven't. I haven't explored yet. I've been to, like, Cambridge and, like, anywhere we've played a show. <laughs> And then, like, I've been uh, to a few shows in Boston, but I haven't really been in and around the Boston. The North End. You have to go. Yeah. You yeah, have at least, to at least go. This summer, if the, if the pandemic's over, we have to go to one of the Italian feasts, John. Yeah. Um, the Fisherman's Feast is, is a lot of fun. And the St. Anthony's is humongous. Yes. Yeah, um, oh, my goodness. Ugh. It's like you're walking around, like, in The Godfather or Goodfellas. <laughs> it's, like, it's hilarious. <laughs> it's a, and, the, and it smells amazing because there's a, so much good food. Uh, and like Everywhere. You're surrounded. You can gain 10 pounds walking down the street, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm skinny. I, I actually, <laughs> I was at the Fisherman's Feast, I think, a couple like years ago, and I saw an actor who was in, who was in The Godfather, and I, I recognized yeah. him. He's a lot older now, but I yelled his name, and he was like, hey, how's it going? And I was like, oh, my God. I was a fanboy. I, like, melted. Oh, my. I would have died. Cool. It was so cool, yeah. It was um, awesome. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Being Italian okay. is always fun. Fam Italian families are hilarious. Yeah, my family's huge. Like when we get together, like we haven't had a, um, a family reunion in a while, but like the last one we had, it was like, like I don't know, we just keep multiplying. My uncle has like six <laughs> kids. I have another uncle that has six kids, another right. uncle has five kids, and then like I have cousins I haven't even met. Like, oh, wow. So they're all, they're yeah. all named Petey and Polly. Yeah. Like, I don't <laughs> I have a lot of Anthony's in my family, so they're like, we oh, know yeah. Tony. Yeah, Tony. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, the they end up having nicknames, but oh yeah, my God. Yeah. <laughs> we do a family, but I can't speak. We do a family reunion every year for St. Anthony's Feast because um, nice. my a lot of my cousins live on a dead end. So we mm. kind of like shut the dead end down and just throw like a massive party. And, yeah, um, it's, it's, your, it's your street yeah. that day. Yeah, it's like, it's ours. We claim it done <laughs> like awesome. and this food for days yeah like, that's, that's yeah. always a thing there's yeah. always too much food at italian get-togethers and like yeah. i don't think they understand that like it's actually kind of a waste sometimes because yeah. no one's gonna eat so we have leftovers in the, in the fridge for like four or five days and like no one's gonna eat this uh, right. oh we're having a party i'll make three trays of chicken broccoli ziti yeah like anyone's gonna eat all that food <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's going to be six of us there. <laughs> exactly. Like, oh, God. And then if you don't eat a lot, the, like, your grandparents or, your, like, your older family relatives, they're like, you don't like the food? Yeah, I like, love the food. I'm you just going like... to cry. I can't, I can't eat it yeah. anymore. Oh, like, the Italian grandparents, well, yeah, like, they're like, come on, come on, eat. And you're like, all right, eat a lot. And I'm like, you're getting kind of fat. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, it's kind of your fault. You just eat pasta. I I can't help it. <laughs> exactly, like four pounds of pasta. Like I have to roll myself out. I can't fit through the door. Like it's. Like, I can't even. I'm like I'm so pasted out. Like I'm I'm 32 now. Like I can't even eat pasta anymore. I'm just my. I think like 30 percent of my body is like pasta sauce. 
<laughs> now, do you say, do you say, Michelle, do your family say gravy or sauce? Okay, so half says, it's half says one, half says the other. Okay. And I understand, I understand what gravy is, yes. but I, yes. <laughs> like, I grew up saying gravy and my grandfather, yep. God rest his soul, he would pass me the gravy for the turkey at mm. like holidays. And I was like, no, Papa, the red one. He goes, the sauce? Yeah. I was yeah, like, yeah. can I have the sauce, please? <laughs> oh <my laughs> like, if you, go to, if you mean, go to Italy and say gravy, they're going to be like, what are you talking about? Because it's like an exactly, American thing. Exactly. So it's like, I, I try to, now, I'm, and now I say sauce because sometimes people just don't know what I'm saying. But at home, I'm like, yeah, give me gravy. I'll eat some more gravy. Right, right. That's right it. For up. me, like, I would wake up on a Sunday morning and my mom would, I could smell it already when I used to live at home. My mom would be like, oh, I'm, I'm, making, I'm making a gravy. And I'm like, oh, I know what she's talking about. She means meatballs and sausages and pork in the sauce. That's the gravy. Yep. Um, so I say to this day, like, oh, let's make a gravy. And my wife's like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> she's like, that won't go good with the pasta. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Brown gravy on pasta, yeah. No good. Um, so... Do you, did, did, did you, or, or do you have plans to play, uh, perform live at all anywhere? Um, it's something that I, I want to do. It's, I, I had plans for it, but now with this yeah, right. whole situation, it's kind of put everything on hold. I have performed um, two songs at the Boston Gardens. So it was Secrets That I Keep. And then there was a, another song called Echo To Me that I didn't release yet. I, I, I might just release it as a single. Um, but it's going to be on the album. Um, so I did that, and I did a, a couple of restaurants in the North End. Uh, do you know Vinyl Groove with Steven Vigilio? He has this, like, doo-wop, old-school kind of band, and he allowed me to open for them, and then I kind of helped them out a few times. But as for the future, at the moment, I don't have anything solidly written down, but that is mm -hmm. definitely something that I, I really want to do. Yeah, so. definitely. It's hard to schedule things now. It's like, you know, Boston Calling got canceled. I was like this close to buying tickets to Boston Calling. And a lot of events got canceled. So it's like, how do you, yeah. like, what do you do? You know, and the best thing right. now is to like go live on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. You know, that's like yeah. all we got now as artists as far as performing. It's true. It's true. And, and, you know, and I think the scary thing is, I mean, the whole thing is scary, I guess, like, no matter what way you look at it, but there's no kind of resolution point, right? Like, everyone's yeah, in limbo. Yeah. It's like, we're all in limbo. And, you know, that sometimes can be so stressful to people, too, because you can't plan anything out. You, you don't even know kind of what to do. So yeah, I've been trying yeah. to write a lot and, and, you know, make connections with acting and music and just kind of form these relationships. So That's that good. when it's when it's over, you can actually you have something like we spoke about this. Is this something that's still on the table? Do you want to do this? So I guess right. like right, right now for artists, like networking is really the best thing to do. Yeah. So later yep. you actually have like stuff that you can go to. Yeah, so that, right. That's, you know, that's good advice. You know, anyone who watches this, you know, keep networking. <laughs> Hone your yeah. yeah, it's very very important. You never know who you're gonna meet and how it can change your life. You know. Yeah, you can just meet that one person. That's so And, uh, you know, it's funny. I was thinking how we met you. We actually, I think it was that radio show. Yes. Yeah. I don't, I, can, I have my memory so bad. Was that in, that was in Boston? It was in Somerville. Somerville. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. And that yeah, was the Chris. Den. Yeah. Chris Haskell. I think he, he was the guy who like, yeah, he was, that was a lot of fun. We were so out of yeah. our own because we'd never play acoustic together. So we had to like, Come up with it on the on the point, like okay, guys, let's make these songs acoustic. I don't know, it's crazy. Oh my god! Like I was sitting there, just mesmerized. I was like, oh my god! I I I loved every part of it. Like I could just feel music like all around me. I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> I was having my own personal concert. I was just sitting there. I was like, this is great. And you guys are phenomenal. And I told you like huge fan of you guys I, I listen to your album I, I mean I truly enjoy what you do with music and I said it that day you're welcome yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, thank I'm, you so much it was so so beautiful so thank beautiful you. and we were yeah, rehearsing, thank you. we were rehearsing in like the back room we we're like all right let's just go over a couple songs what songs do we do 
All right, we played it like once really quietly because they told us not to be loud. And then we're like, all right, you got to go for it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's I wouldn't so believe awesome. that. Like, it, I wouldn't have known that without you telling me. Like, I, I, was, like, I was like, this is, this is incredible. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Because we're, we're typically we're, we're I mean, we're not like loud, but we're you know, we're a full sounding band on stage right. and yeah. electric guitars and whatever. And uh, when you when you go from from that to doing acoustic, you find that you create different sounds you never knew you could make before. You're like, wow, you know what? It's still powerful when it's soft. Yeah. Um, oh, slower, God, yes. Like that. Um, yeah, it was so beautiful. Yeah, Thank you. I really enjoyed it. We appreciate it. So yeah, let me ask you, if, if there was any other genre of music you would you would consider writing for, or singing for, what would it be? Or if you've ever done it before, what other genre would there be? To write for another artist or for myself? Yeah, or just like, play? if you were just like kind of experiment, you are like, you know what, let me try some, because there'll be some times where, um, so I started writing, like, I guess you could say folk type songs, because I, I write on acoustic guitar and Everything that comes out of me is slow and melodic and soft. And then one day I brought the songs to my bass player and he added funk bass over my acoustic songs. And I'm like, what are you doing? And I was like, whoa, we had this whole weird sound now where it's like we're funk now when these songs were supposed to be slow and soft. So I'm wondering if you ever experimented with different genres or just try to write for like a a different type of song. You had already mentioned that this album is going to have a kind of a little bit more of a variety of sounds. So I'm wondering about that. Yeah. I mean, something I grew up really old school, like on doo-wop and and Mm. Frankie Valli and Shanana. Like I I love that. I love Frankie Valli. I love that stuff. Right. I would love to, um, to write something to kind of like a, a doo-wop flair. Right. Yeah. But I guess, um, you know, it's stupid of me to say, I guess I don't know how, but it would be the first time. Cause you know how everything's so different. Everything has its own characteristic mm-hmm. of form. Not that you need to follow a certain pattern, but some things complement th- a certain way uh, more than others. Right. <clears throat> yep. And so trying to figure that out, but that would be something that, oh my goodness, I, I would love it. Yeah. I- because I, I was, I was going like to say like, um, if someone were to send you a, you know, an, a guitar track of like doo-wop chord progression um, and you can just write lyrics for it and sing over it, it would be kind of raw, but it would be really fun to do, I think, if, if you were interested in that. I, John and I could even do it. It would be so much fun to just collaborate yeah. and just see, what come, we just see what comes out of it. It could be a little love, special, you know? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I would love that. It's so funny you say that because, you know, how I was talking about like connecting with people and, and I was thinking about you guys before you even reached out to me to, to wow. do this. And I was just like, man, I would love to do something with these guys. I'm like, they're so talented. I, I, I appreciate and really love their music. I was like, I, I want to reach out to them. And it was actually on like my to-do list. And then you had reached out to me. And I was like, well, this is really awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, this kind of worked out. Um, yeah. Oh, my goodness. I, I, would, I would love that. It would be such an honor. I, I, loved it. I would love that. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, we we should yeah. do that because like we're not doing anything. Video. We're actually we're actually working on an album right now, but we're doing it digitally. Like, <laughs> I guess <laughs> it's kind of strange, but um, yeah, I'd love to do something like that. Just send you something and just see what you can come up with, and then just play around with it. Absolutely, yeah. Derek, Derek and I talked about just like doing an album ourselves because like him and I like to write like acoustic, indie, slow, melodic songs, and every time we bring it to the band, it's always like it just like gets really heavy and funky. You know, right. I mean, like with the yeah. Face, so like, yeah. yeah that would be a really cool, cool thing to think about and start working on. Oh my goodness, yes, I I would love that. I would love that. I I have like um I think I need to also break outside of my comfort zone. So like back yeah. in 2013, I was very like pop. I was like. I love Britney Spears still to this day, but I was very much like, Britney, oh my God, yes, this is great, right? And then like, as I got older and I started kind of developing, well, not developing, just going through life's situations that allow you to develop into a different person, I was like, I want to say something a little bit more. So then I, so then I ended up going into, I'm, I'm huge, like, I love Tim Burton. I love like Edgar Allan Poe. I love like, I love this darkness, like this eeriness. So I ended up gravitating towards that kind of style. And so I think um, within this album, I'm trying to break it up because I originally had tracks and I was like, wow, everything really sounds the same. 
I don't want that like that. And so then I ended right, up right. switching out. But I think it, um, you know what happens sometimes? You know when you have a thought and then you just keep thinking about things and then I'm like, what the hell was my point just now? <laughs> yeah, yep. That happens so, <laughs> hmm, that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, you were going to break out of your comfort zone. Yes, yes, yes. See? Oh, my God. <laughs> this is what happens. It's, it's like a million things. Fire, fire in my head. Bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. Bounce. That's why I have all these post-its. I have all these post-its of random things. So I'm trying to put them. I'm just so scattered. But, yeah, so I'm trying to break outside of my comfort zone. And so I understand, um, John, what you were saying, where, like, it's not, it started to sound a little bit heavy. Yeah. Right? Like, I was starting to write things, and I'm like, okay, this is very, like, lyrically heavy. Mm -hmm. This needs to not be. Like, do you know what I mean? So that there's yeah, kind yeah. of different elements, you know, of things. So breaking outside of the comfort zone too is is something that, you know, I'm I'm trying I'm trying to do. Right. Definitely. That yeah, we, we all are for sure. Yeah. yeah. But okay, so you know what we're gonna we're gonna let's leave this with what's your just top of your head, boom, your favorite artist of all time. Oh my god, that is a difficult question. Or top awesome. three, top, top three, top, whatever you want to do. Just name a couple that are your absolute number ones, you know? Oh, my God. It was stressing me out because music is so good. All right, okay, let's do it. I love Aerosmith. Oh, my God. Okay. Love them. Um, of all time, Dean Martin. Nice, nice. Love. A big fan of Dean Martin. Oh, my God. Love. Dino. Yes. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. He has such a great <laughs> crooning. He has such a great crooning voice. Every time a song of his comes on, like right away, you're like, I'm Dean Martin. Like you can just tell it's him. It's great. Oh my God. Yeah. It has this tonality that you, it just, it transports you somewhere. Right. Like yep. it's just, it's crazy. Um, and, and third all time favorite. Oh my goodness. You know, I'm really digging right now. Sam Hunt. Okay. I, gotta, I, I, gotta, I, mean, I, I don't know much, much by Sam Hunt. I'll check, yeah, I'll check him out though. He, he's really good. He, he's country, but he uh, he has these elements of like hip hop, a little soulful. Like he kind of he stays true to his root, but he allows mm -hmm. these other influences to kind of just manifest in his songs, which which I appreciate so much. I love yeah. that. That's that's really excellent. I'll check him out for sure. Oh, um, sure. All right, and uh, what what would you say? Because you're you're also you know big into film and movies. What are your top three movies? Or favorite movie <laughs> okay um <laughs> i absolutely love the prince of persia have you ever seen that Wait, was that so is there a remake is there like two different versions of that or am i thinking of something else i don't know if there was a remake it it, it could have been uh jake gyllenhaal was in it oh yeah that's the one i'm thinking of yeah i thought either that or there was a video game of the prince of persia that i'm thinking of i don't know it was something before that but yeah i remember i remember seeing the trailer for it i haven't seen the movie so Oh my goodness, I love that. Whenever like it doesn't matter what mood, it just it puts me in this right place. And I'm like, this is so great. Um, oh my goodness, what else? You know when you you you're like, oh, this is my favorite. Someone asks you a question, you're like, I like nothing apparently. Okay. Yeah, I get yeah, that. I, I, you know, like, I'm like, <laughs> like, I really don't like anything. I, um yeah. I oh my goodness, there is this movie with I'm huge with Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin, and um <laughs> And they actually go to war. And I can't remember the name of it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. I probably saw it years ago, too, with my grandfather, because he was a big, big fan of them. Oh, I love Jerry um, Lewis. I, like, he, if I could meet anybody living or dead, Jerry Lewis all the way. Jerry Lewis, yeah. <laughs> Classic Jerry Lewis. <laughs> Jerry Lewis. There's that one. And then um, another one. I, I love The Wedding Date with Deborah Messing. Mm. I don't know that either. Yeah. You know what's so funny? There's a lot of movies with the word wedding in them that I feel like I haven't seen. Like, there's a lot of weddings I have to see. <laughs> yeah. I've seen, I've seen Wedding Crashes. I've certainly seen that movie. <laughs> but... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Pineapple Express. I just oh, yeah, you told you that. guys a few minutes yeah. and see what happens. Like, it, when, when we hang up, I'll be like, why did I say this? You'll think of ten of them. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It happens all the time. I'm like, actually, I, I, have, I don't know myself, really. I don't know what I like. So you're, you, so Jake Gyllenhaal comes up a, a lot for you, and I know that you were involved in, in one of his projects. Did you know, because I've seen a lot of his movies, he, I, I'm a humongous musical fan. I, uh, musicals and me, uh, uh, Stephen Sondheim is like my favorite thing of all time. 
uh, Jake Gyllenhaal was in um, Sunday in the Park with George, and he sings. The, he's the lead, and I couldn't believe the pipes in this guy. Um, I thought he was just a movie star. I thought he was just an actor, but he can sing and do musicals, and I was like, yeah. so impressed by him. Yeah. Um, so anybody, who, anybody who hasn't seen that, just go on YouTube and just listen to him singing that. Uh, it's wow, yeah. you'll be impressed. Jake Gyllenhaal is not. Uh, Pretty good to look at too. He's a pretty handsome guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I'm I'm in I'm in on Jake Gyllenhaal for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, and he's absolutely. he's really kind too, which is the most Great. important. Yeah, he's just so nice. He, he seems so. like he would be. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But hey, Michelle, thanks so much for being on here with us. Um, we had a lot of fun. Thank um, you. We're gonna. Yeah, this will probably be episode three. Um, we're still in the very beginning stages of the show or whatever it is. Hopefully it takes off, and if it doesn't, it'll just be just for fun. But we're going to post these on Facebook and YouTube, um, and hopefully people can watch and just uh, get some info on you and what you're doing. So, Thank you so Excellent. much. I'm so grateful. This is a lot of fun. Thank you so much. <laughs>